Welcome to Practice Update. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, practical issues surrounding the use of ertafitinib in patients with urothelial cell carcinoma. Uh, Guru, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, the role of ertafitinib for patients with urothelial cell carcinoma. Right. So ertafitinib is an oral pan-FGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And this drug is active in patients with somatic activating mutations in FGFR3 or FGFR2. The activating mutations might be either uh, mutations or fusions. And this drug was mostly has been studied, studied in the group of patients that were post-platinum. Uh, some of them had received a PD-1 inhibitor also, but they were all post-platinum. And in this setting, the drug had activity with a response rate of approximately 40%. And based upon this, the drug was approved as therapy for metastatic urothelial carcinoma with the activating FGFR3 or FGFR2 alterations um, in, in patients with metastatic disease. What about patients that might not uh, have those uh mutations or alterations is this what can can the therapy still be used for those patients not really so this drug is active uh, only in that group of patients with the somatic uh, fgfr3 or 2 activating alterations which is found in 15 to 20 percent of patients um, uh, and and the mutation can be identified based on several different assays when the drug was approved, they did uh, uh, approve a companion assay using the Kyogen RT-PCR assay that detects the fusion or mutation uh, based on the RNA from the tumor. Uh, however, it is also true that you can identify these alterations based on other platforms such as foundation. We have our own in-house panel and uh, Dana Farber. So there are several other platforms available out there that can detect these alterations. However, the one that the trial investigators used and was uh, approved by the FDA as a companion uh, assay was the Kyogen Terra Screen assay. So for patients that you're seeing in clinic and um, discussing systemic therapy, how often uh, do you refer them for testing to identify these alterations? Is it um, solely those patients that are in the metastatic space or cisplatinum refractory, or do you think that uh, upfront testing to identify these things early might be useful? That's a very good question, the timing of uh, testing for FGFR3 alterations. It's fair to say that the trend is to get the FGFR genomic alteration identified as early as possible in patients with metastatic disease. The drug is still not FDA approved as first line therapy. Uh, however, uh, it does take seven to 10 working days to get the result back from the RT-PCR. If you did a, a genomic panel, based like foundation or a different uh, panel uh, that looks at uh, sequencing of genes, that could take a little longer, like two to three weeks to get the results back. So sometimes that kind of timeline can be problematic uh, in patients who have metastatic disease and they're progressing post-platinum and you're waiting two or three weeks at least to get the assay, depending on again, which assay you're using, it could take seven to 10 days of the RT-PCR assay or two to three weeks with the next generation sequencing assay. Also remember there is a little bit of time that can be taken up by uh, for finding the, the tumor. Sometimes the tumor is sitting in a different institution. So based on, because of these factors, the trend has been, at least in my clinic, to get the genomic uh, assay done to identify FGFR3 or two activating mutations or fusions in all patients with metastatic disease, um, even at the time of getting going on platinum-based chemotherapy or soon thereafter so that we have the information handy. Uh, for patients that have an FGFR2 versus FGFR3 mutation, is there a significant difference in um, response or activity of um, ertafitinib? 
That's a good question. So most of the patients in the clinical trial, which had approximately 100 patients, had FGFR3 activating mutations. There was a minority of patients that had activating fusions. That was around 20 or so patients. Now, so it's hard to make judgments on the response based on the specific alteration based on such small numbers. Numerically, when they looked at the response rate, they seemed a little bit lower in patients with fusions, uh, where it was just a shade under 20% response rate. While patients with the FGFR3 mutations, the response rate was somewhat more robust in the 50% range. However, the numbers were so small that when they looked at the forest plots and based, there, based on the specific alteration, uh, there was not a statistically significant difference. So at the moment, I would say that it's not possible, possible to make a definitive statement regarding specific mutations making tumors more sensitive than others. But there was this numerical trend that the activating mutations seem to be more sensitive to the drug, uh, at least numerically, compared to the, those with fusions. But at the end of the day, I want to offer the drug to both patients with mutations or fusions that are activating. Thank you for a, a very good summary of a very complicated area. Thank you, Matt.